this problem or that problem. It's just held you back and held you back and you've been restricted and you've had this obstacle and that obstacle and this problem and this report from the doctor and this from the economy and this issue in the relationship and this issue with the job. Some of you, you feel like the enemy has pulled you back and pulled you back and pulled you back and pulled you back. But you know, whenever you declare Jesus as your Lord and you transfer your trust that God, God, you take a hold of the bow. God, you take a hold of the situation. When God takes a hold of it and releases you, whoo! Being your best with Trey Johnson. Hello, this is Trey Johnson with Being Your Best with Trey Johnson. We are honored that you have turned us on today. And I believe God's gonna open up your heart. He's gonna open up your mind. There are gonna be some things that go off today on the inside of you that are gonna change your life forever. So I want you to expect to hear the voice of God. Have open ears, open heart, get ready to receive. Get your iPad, your notepad, your Bible, your pen. Get ready to take notes and let's get into God's Word and let's grow. And Timothy knew at any time the next knock on the door could be a Roman soldier coming to take him away at this time. I mean, they were hanging Christians, burning them alive, lying in the streets. That was, that, that, that was the street lights of the day. I mean, there were so many uh, demonic things happening in the world at that time. And Timothy had got hit allowed fear to consume him and listen to what his mentor, his teacher, his spiritual father was talking to him. And in verse 5, he says, When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. So he's saying, Timothy, I want you to remember what God did on the inside of you. I want you to remember, I want you to go back in the times that you spent with your grandmother when they prayed, things happened. When you was with your mother and things prayed, uh, she prayed and things happened. He says that same faith that moved heaven and earth that you experienced, it's in you, Timothy. And if you're born again, child of God, you need to know that you have the faith of God on the inside of you. You have the faith you need to live in confidence and, and trust and faith in our God, it, no matter what's going on in this world. So Paul is not only encouraging Timothy, but he's encouraging you and I to stay focused on our purpose, to stay focused on our relationship with God, to stay focused on the things that God's instructing you to do. Regain your focus. Remember your first love. Remember what he started on the inside of you. Keep your hunger. And he goes on, I want to remind you to stir up the gift of God that's in you. I want to remind you to use the name that is above every name. I want to remind you that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I want to remind you to use the power of praise. I want to remind you to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. I want to remind you to declare the Word of God. I want to remind you to stir up the purpose of God has not changed for your life regardless of what is going on in this world. I want to remind you. So Paul is just reminding us of our inheritance in Christ Jesus. And he goes on to say, which is in you, and he says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. He's saying, Timothy, I want you to remember you're a child of God now and fear has no right to live in your life. The spirit of fear does not have a right to dominate you. I want to remind you that you have a spirit of power, of love, of a sound mind. Power is where we get our word dynamite. It's the word dunamis. It's, it's, it's exploding power. He says, I want to remind you that's what's in you. Love, Galatians 5, 6, says faith works by love. Love never fails. There's no fear in love. He said, I want you to remind yourself that God loves you and, and that same love that God loved you with is in you to love other people. Timothy, refocus. He's telling you and I to refocus. And a sound mind, your mind, your spirit man is born again. Remember, Timothy, a sound mind is a saved mind. You think like you're saved. You think like you're healed. You think like you're delivered. You think like you believe God's Word. You think like God is in you and for you and on you and with you. You think like you know you have angels taking charge over you. You think that you have the name that is above every name. Timothy, you've got to stir yourself up. <laughs> Trey, you've got to stir yourself up because all of us have flesh to deal with. You know that? There are times that we don't feel like going to church. There are times that we don't feel like declaring the Word. There are times that we don't feel like being lovely. There are times 
But Paul is saying, I need you to remind yourself of who you truly are. And your inheritance is not a spirit of fear. Because see, a, a reaction to fear, fear thinks differently. Fear acts differently. Fear talks differently than faith does. Remember the psalmist David in Psalms 23 verse 4? He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, now, I want you to think of the leadership he was dealing with. I want you to think of the persecution he was dealing with. I want you to think of all the problems that were going on in the world, just like we have issues today. Then he made this declaration, I will fear no evil. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. God, you're, I will fear no evil. When you hear something on the news, I will fear no evil. When you look at your bank account and gas is whatever price it is, I will fear no evil. Your kids are not acting the way you've trained them to act, and, and I will fear no evil. Maybe your marriage is not doing what it should be doing. I will fear no evil. Why would David say that? Because he knew faith is what moved God, and fear was trying to shut him down from being one of the greatest leaders this world has ever seen. And so if David did it, you and I should do the same thing. I will fear no evil. See, that's what the spirit of faith does. I know you're getting a lot out of today's teaching. I, I know that every time I open up God's Word and I'm hearing what God is saying, it just stirs me. It, it does something on the inside of me, and I know it's doing something on the inside of you. You know, as Heather and I travel around the country, and as the show continues to go around the world, we want you to pray about becoming a partner to this ministry. Every person that's saved, healed, delivered, you're a part of that. You know, Paul had partners as he went around and he started different works and different churches. And, and the Bible talks about the power of partnership and how the same grace that's on us is the same grace that's on you. And, and there's just such a connection. We can't do it by ourselves. You can't maybe go where we go and we couldn't go without you. So, so go to TreyJohnsonMinistries.com and pray about becoming a partner. There's a way to give on there. You can text to give. You can give online. You can mail us a check. We also, we have a, a new magazine out. We want to encourage you to, to let us know you'd like the new magazine, Winning Ways. It's Heather and I and what's going on around the world through the ministry, roping, leadership, all the different things that we're a part of. And, and while you're there, we want you to check out the product, not only today's teaching, and, but there's so many hours worth of teaching to help you grow in your faith. You know, you can go to our podcast, you can go to our YouTube channel, all the social media avenues. If you're serious about your walk with God and you really want to go to the next level, we have more content than you can probably consume and we're going to keep producing because we want you to know God and we want you to be your best. Part of our inheritance is, is the spirit of faith. What does the spirit of faith do? The spirit of faith believes God's Word and it declares God's Word. How do I tap into the same spirit of faith that David had, that Noah had, that Moses had, that Abraham had, that Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel, Jesus had, Peter had, John had, James had? We having the same spirit of faith, we believe, therefore we speak. We believe and we speak what? According to what is written. You find it in God's Word. Remember, I will fear no evil. The spirit of faith believes God's Word even when you don't feel like believing. Even though you might have the symptoms of fear, the, the feelings of fear, the spirit of faith believes in its heart and opens its mouth because see, faith is a spiritual force. Just like fear is a spiritual force. And so when you begin to declare that I'm afraid and I'm going under and I will die and I will have cancer and I will have this and I will have... And you're motivated by... It's a spiritual force that gives Satan a right to operate. But when you believe God's Word and declare God's Word, it's a spiritual force. Remember Job chapter 3 verse 25? Job said, The thing that I feared has come upon me, even though he was acting real religious and he was going to the temple and he was praying and he was praying for his kids in fear and he comes out when all hell broke loose against him. 
He said, the thing that I feared had come upon me. The thing that I feared had come upon me. Fear gave Satan a right. It wasn't God stealing, killing, and destroying. The thing that I feared had come upon me. He got the spiritual force of fear working. But if fear can bring things to us, faith can bring things to us. The spirit of faith does what? When you feel fear, you believe God's Word and you declare God's Word. When, when a storm is coming, you believe God's Word and you declare God's Word. You get a doctor's report, you believe God's Word and you declare God's Word. Remember, God says, you have the keys. You, what you forbid is forbidden. What you bind is bound. What you loose is loose. You have the authority. You give the devil no place. You submit to God. You resist the devil and he will flee. The spirit of faith believes God's Word and speaks God's Word. Now, this is up to you. This is, this is not up to God. He says, I give you the keys. I give you the tools. Just like he said, you've got to put on the armor of God. You have it. It's created for you. You have everything you need to overcome and live a victorious life. The spirit of faith believes God. God's Word and speaks God's Word. My God will supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. He sent His Word and healed every manner of sickness and every manner of disease. I believe in my heart and I declare with my mouth. That's what the spirit of faith does. The spirit of faith doesn't just sit back and get their tail whipped. No, no. The spirit of faith believes God's Word, declares God's Word. Believe God's Word, declare God's Word. But that's up to you. It's up to me. Nobody can make me do these things. And Paul is telling you and I, our inheritance is a, an inheritance of faith. It's a rich, glorious inheritance. It's an inheritance that causes us to overcome. He's saying, realize that you're a child of God. You're not just some religious person. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The spirit of faith believes and the spirit of faith speaks. Listen to this in Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. He says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God or daughters of God. For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear. So when we were separated from God, before we made Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, we were influenced by the spirit of fear. That's just the way people who don't know God, that's the way they live. It's the way they respond. It's the way they react because that's the spirit that is leading them. That's the spirit that's influencing them. But once again, Paul is telling us, listen, remember that we don't have this spirit. He says, not a spirit of slavery to put you once more into bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father, Father. He's saying, realize that you're a child of God. Now realize when you listen in here, you look into your heart that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God is bearing witness with your spirit. And when you look in there, your spirit's going to say, He's my Father. He's my source. That's what the word Father means. He is the source of strength, source of courage, source of hope, source of healing. Remember, who do you say that He is? Well, the real you is going to say what the Bible says about Jesus, about God the Father, about the Holy Spirit. Who do you say that He is? When you listen, if you're a born-again child of God, you'll hear your spirit man saying, He's my Father, and I know there's more in me than what I'm walking in. There's more to my inheritance than just knowing I'm going to spend eternity with God. And he continues on here, The Spirit Himself thus testifies together with our own spirit, assuring us that we're children of God. Assuring us. You know, I'm always praying about ways to add value to people. That's why we write the daily de uh, devotionals. That's why we write books. That's why we do the TV show. We have the podcast. We have the social media. But another thing that we offer, I'm an executive director for the John Maxwell Organization. And every Wednesday morning, I do a mentorship call, a personal growth, a personal development call where I do teachings for about 35, 40 minutes and people ask questions, takeaways. If you're serious about your growth, I want you to, to call. I want you to, to go to info at TreyJohnsonMinistries.com. Just inquire about the mentorship program. 
and, and let's grow. Let's lift our thinking, lift our believing, let's add value to our life, and let's keep making a difference. So notice he's saying the Holy Spirit lets us know, assures us that we're children of God. Remember, everything he did, he did it for us. And the Holy Spirit assures us there's more in you than what you're walking in. He assures us that we're joint heirs. His name is our name. His Spirit is our Spirit. The power of His blood operates in our life. The same way it affects Him, it affects us. He approaches the Father. In Him, we approach the Father. We have an inheritance. Joint heirs. Maybe, you know, my wife and I, we have a, a, a joint account. The money that's in there, she has every bit of right to it. It is a joint account, a share. We, we share it. And so when Jesus made Satan to nothing, he defeated him. He paralyzed him. First John 3, 8 says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifest to destroy, loosen, undo the works that Satan had done. So that power and authority, his power and authority is our power and authority. Remember in Luke chapter 9, he brought the 12 together and he gave them power and authority. In Luke chapter 10, he brought the 70 together, gave them power and authority. Then when Jesus died and he was resurrected, he, he said, Now all the power and authority has been given unto me, but I turn and I give it unto you. That's our inheritance. And it says the Holy Spirit will lead us, assuring us that we're children of God, assuring us that we're heirs of God, assuring us that we're joint heirs with Jesus. Now, once again, this can't be comprehended with our mind. This has to be comprehended with our heart, with our spirit man. The same comprehension that assures us that we're saved can be the same spirit of God that assures us we're blessed, we're healed, we're delivered, we're protected. Remember, our inheritance is not an inheritance of fear, but it's an inheritance of faith. Go with me to... Um, let's see. We'll go to John. John chapter 14. This is a very powerful thing. And I, I'm just touching on some things that can help us here. Jesus lets us know in John 14 verse 1. He says, Do not let your hearts be troubled, distressed, agitated. Now remember, who has the power and authority to let their heart be troubled? We do. If my heart is agitated and troubled, then I let it get that way. And Jesus says, do not let your heart be troubled, distressed, agitated. How? You believe in God. You adhere to, trust in, rely on God. Believe in, adhere to, trust in, rely also on me. So we have the responsibility to not let our heart be troubled. Verse 27, John 14, verse 27, he says, Peace I leave with you, my own peace I now give and bequeath to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Who, who is not letting their hearts be troubled? That's our responsibility. Don't let them be afraid. Well, I just can't help it. You know, mama, she was afraid. My daddy was afraid. And I'm, no, no, you're a child of God. And the Spirit of God is on the inside of you. And some point in time in our life, we have to take responsibility. And this is Jesus speaking to me. He says, you don't let your heart be afraid, Trey. You don't let your heart be troubled, Trey. You don't be agitated, distressed, frustrated, Trey. You don't let yourself get that way. Well, how? Do I not let my heart be troubled? Have you watched the news lately? How do I not let my heart get troubled? Have you heard what leadership is doing? Hmm. So I've got to be real with myself. Because we can put on this face. How you doing, oh blessed? I'm just blessed. Yeah, that's so blessed. And on the inside, your stomach is in knots. Go to church. How you doing? Oh, just great. God is just so good, so faithful. You hadn't slept in three days. Not because you're being productive, but because you're full of fear and worry and anxious. And Jesus is speaking to you and He's speaking to me. No matter what the conditions are, He says, you take dominion and authority over your mind. It's your mind. You control the way that you think. Remember studies say we think between 60 and 100,000 thoughts a day. 
Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, that the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down of imaginations. What was he telling us? That we have the ability to bring every thought into captivity and make it line up with what God said. What did God say? That regardless of what diesel and gas prices are, He supplies all of our need. What did God say? Regardless of the doctor's report, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. What did God say? Remember, the spirit of faith believes and the spirit of faith speaks. What did God say? A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me. The spirit of faith believes and the spirit of faith speaks. When Jesus says, don't let your heart be troubled, what was he saying? Use what you have. Use your ability to bring down that fear thought and put back up the thoughts of God. Put back up the promise of God. This is why Philippians 4, 8, Paul says, if you can find anything good and lovely and trustworthy and praiseworthy, anything good, he says, think on these things. Why? Because what we think on gets into our heart. What we continually watch will get into our heart. What we hear will get into our heart. Remember, the spirit of faith doesn't sit back like just some wimp and just think, well, I just can't control anything. I don't know God's in control and I'm nothing. No, 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 no. Get a hold to yourself. He says, you pull the thought down, you open your mouth, you believe in your heart, you get it coming out of your mouth, and you watch. I don't care what kind of fear is trying to grip you, if you will believe in your heart and start getting it coming out of your mouth. No fear here. No fear here. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow. No fear here. Fear, you don't belong here. I resist you in the name that is above every name. The name of Jesus is above fear. Fear, you get out of here in Jesus' name. No fear here. I remember when the kids were little and we'd put them on horses and stuff and the horse might start acting up a little bit and you could see them kind of tinch up and we'd say, no, 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 get it coming out of your mouth. No fear here. I, I remember Chloe, I can just see her. She's this little bitty, four or five years old and she's on this big old horse. The horse start to do something and she'd kind of get a little... And I'd say, no, no, baby, get it. No, no fear here. Let me hear you say it. No fear here. You might not be getting on a big horse, but you're living life. And there's going to be times that you feel afraid. I remember one pony took off and, 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 and drug Hayes off the, the little pony, and I had to put him back up on there. And you could tell he didn't want to be up there because life just knocked him for a good one as a little boy. And I just had him continue to say, no fear here, no fear here. No fear here. Get it coming out of your mouth. That's what Jesus is saying. Don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Don't let your heart be troubled. My peace I give to you. This is a peace that you can't get from any drug. You can't get it from any hooker. You can't get it from any, any sport. You can't get it from money. You, he says, my peace I give to you. Isaiah 26, verse 3, it says, Those who keep their minds set upon Him, they live in perfect peace because you're thinking on the answer and not the problem. You're thinking on things good and not bad. You're thinking on what you do have and not on what you don't have. You're thinking on, you're thinking on who's in you, who's equipped you, who's for you, if God's for you, who can be against you. He says, My peace, I give it to you. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Stop allowing yourself. Who, who stops allowing themselves? It's not God stopping it. He says, it's you. Stop allowing yourself to be agitated and disturbed, and do not permit yourself to be fearful. I just can't help it. No, yes, you can. Jesus says, you don't let yourself be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. You don't let it. You, no fear here, you believe in your heart and you declare with your mouth, you resist the devil and he has to flee. You resist the worry and anxiety and fear. The spirit of faith believes and the spirit of faith speaks. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, we're getting ready to be done. He says, and when we have known and believed the love that God has for us. Now notice this, he didn't say you just heard about the love of God. You just didn't see a t-shirt that says, I love Jesus. No, no. He says, you have known and you have believed the love of God. Remember, our belief determines our behavior. Our belief, if I believe that God loves me, I'm going to behave like He loves me. If I believe that God's Word works, then I'm going to act like God's Word works. If I believe, drives my action. He says, 
You have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. And love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love Cast out fear, because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Now notice this. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. As he is, so are we in this world. I want you to think about the day of judgment. Jesus comes back. He says, because you understand that God loves you, you're going to be bold. You're going to be confident. Boldness is the absence of fear. So when I'm bold, then I know. See, when you know, you're bold. When you're bold, you know. When Jesus comes back, everybody's going to be running and screaming that don't know God. They're going to be trying to hide themselves and cover themselves up. And oh! And they're going to be full of fear. And you know what you and I are going to do? Because we're confident that God loves us. God has forgiven us. God has separated our sin as far as the east is from the west. We're going to be bold. Our spirit man is going to be saying, that's my father. That's my daddy. Yeah, yeah, you came for me. And there's going to be a boldness in the day of judgment. We're not going to be afraid because Jesus took our sins. It was already dealt with for us. We're going to be bold and confident. I've been waiting for this time. Now listen. If he says we can have that boldness then, he wants us to have that boldness now. Today. No matter what leadership is doing, no matter what the economy is doing, he says, I want you to be bold. When you're confident that because God loves me, he provides for me. Because God loves me, he protects me. Because God loves me, he heals me. Because God loves me, he is my front and my back and my side and my top and my... Because he loves me, when you are sure that God loves you, you're going to be bold. Not only then, but he wants us to be bold now. And he says, and that boldness causes fear to get out of here because you know God loves you. God loves you. God loves me. He says it should produce such a boldness. I'm not saying a, a false boldness. I'm not saying an arrogance. Boldness is a confidence. Boldness is listening to the real you, the Spirit of God in you, assuring you that God's for you. God's going to help you Keep stepping, keep growing, keep going, stay focused on His love, stay focused on the blood, stay focused on use your, your, your inheritance. Remember, you're in a family. What was Jesus's is yours. You have His name, you have His word, you have His spirit, you have angels, you have all these things. It is in your inheritance. Enjoy the inheritance. Jesus rose from the dead to give us an inheritance and left us His spirit to make sure we enjoy it. And part of our inheritance is an inheritance of faith, and not inheritance of fear. Believe God's Word. Declare God's Word. It's your responsibility. Fear, you get out of here. You don't belong in my house. You don't belong in my mind. You don't belong in my heart. Get out of here in Jesus' name. This is Trey Johnson. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. We want to encourage you to go to the website, TreyJohnsonMinistries.com. Write us. Let us know what you're learning, how you're growing, what God's doing in your life. And you know what? If God puts it on your heart to be a partner to this ministry, we want you to be obedient to that. Contact us today, TreyJohnsonMinistries.com, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.